how's it going people welcome back to the channel and welcome back to the forever arsenal podcast hit the like button first and foremost let's get to a thousand likes as we record this right now we are top of the league but obviously liverpool do play united away at old trafford later runs so hopefully we can sit back enjoy that Have come on fun. united oh sorry i, w- I want two thousand likes we're up at 8 a.m on a sunday for this people we we are putting a shift in we love you all we couldn't wait to talk about it. I was up at six to watch the F1. I woke up, saw a crash, slept through the rest of it. And now here I am to talk Arsenal. <laughs> Lee and I are playing football later. We're, we're here. We're, we're, we're making this happen, people. Are you playing football together? No. no. I mean, we were we were a masterful midfield partnership at the Claw Cup, uh, which we hopefully we will revive this summer. Um, but... Um, you know, no, we're we're not. We're playing separately. Ah. But the Petit and Vieira of the AFTV teams is, is that is that right? You, you, right? you may you may mock that, Jordan, but I'll tell no, you what, you're near the marks that you I, are. I'm not. Mark. I'm not mocking it at all. I'm not mocking it at all. It's more Jorginho Flamini, <laughs> not in their prime. <laughs> <laughs> Danielson <laughs> and bloody Diaby. Is that is that is that what we're talking? about? <laughs> It's more Jorginho at five years old and Flamini in 20 <laughs> years' time. But, you know, <laughs> there's something there. They're saying there. They're saying there. Good luck. Good luck. Hopefully it all goes well. It seems like it's where it started off as a nice day, but yesterday didn't go too nice. So, nice yeah, hopefully nice it stays. Day. Hopefully it stays. You enjoy your, your, your game of footy. Um, Jordan, all good? <laughs> all good, sir. All good, sir. Buzzing, yeah. bouncing. Yeah, man. Yeah, uh, cool. Well, we might as well get straight into it. Like James said, let's try and get 2,000 likes. Why not? It's 8 a.m. Sunday morning, the morning after the game, the day before. And it was a nice professional victory, 3-0 away from home. No problems whatsoever. Um, goals, clean sheet and, you know, further plus three added to our already best in the league goal difference. So on that front, things are looking great. Um but let's talk about the game. I mean, Lee, it was an away game. You was there. Um, before we talk about the end of the game and after the game, let's talk about the game itself. Um, how did how, how did you feel? I mean, the first half, you know, we went one nil up courtesy of a penalty. Um, but did you feel like it was a game that was wrapped up then with Brighton? You know, no, no, yeah. no, I didn't. I, I, I'm going to say at half time, I was left a little bit frustrated, but because I felt we should have been three new up. But we we created some good chances, and I, I was actually saying that um, as good as we're playing, only being one 0 up against a team like Brighton, um, and because uh, I, I think Brighton are a decent side, you know, they hadn't lost since August there. Yeah? That was against West Ham, I think, the second game of the season. So um, I, I was a little bit, you know, not a hundred percent with it. Second half, blown away by what we've done. I'm absolutely blown away by the performance, the defensive performance, the goals. Actually sitting there thinking, um, 2-0, good result. Thinking, pick up three points myself. Um, looking looking at that light, I was thinking very good. Trossard goes through. If you have a look, the whole crowd are on, on the going absolutely mad. I'm sitting on the... I'm just sitting there on my knees going, he'd normally miss that. But oh, no. <laughs> it in like, you know. So, uh, no, I think we needed the goal 3-0. Um, as great as a performance it was, um, we actually improved on our goal difference over the, over uh, over Man City, which you wouldn't have thought before the game, particularly when they were four one up at one stage. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I just think it was a masterclass of performance. The, the thing that but gets me more than anything is that Brighton, as you say, half the night they just didn't know what they they just couldn't break us down. The organisation of the defensive performance, not just from our guys at the back was um the way we we just stopped them doing it and i'll tell you what i'm, I'm sitting there thinking they ain't gonna score they're not gonna score it's just either gonna be two nil or three nil i think actually i think it, the way we sort of set now i think it was looking for two nil but then we we nicked, picked their pockets and scored an absolute fantastic breakaway goal which is something that we we needed to do after this man city game you know like we can do that and, and I'm looking at it. I don't know if you guys think this. I'm thinking, you know, we might have to be doing a little bit of this against Bayern Munich. And, and it was like, we're going to use our, um, use this as a training exercise. I just thought it was um, 
an unbelievable performance. Some of the individual performances in that team yesterday, I've got to say, you know, were fantastic. The two midfield players, Jorginho um, and Declan Rice, were, 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 were I, I can't speak highly enough of them two at this moment in time. Declan Rice, work rate and energy. And I've got to bring Odegaard into that as well. Them two, I don't know what they're doing for the fitness guy. It, it, it was incredible. I, I actually watched it back on TV and I, I'm, I'm going to be really, I don't know if you actually appreciate and see the work rate that they're doing off the ball because, you, you know, sometimes the camera's following the, the ball. And I don't mean that disrespectfully people watching TV. It's just incredible just watching them run and run and run. And there was a time um, Declan Rice was about to take a corner and he was on his haunches. He's gone. I, I, I'm saying, get him off. He's gone. He's gone. Two minutes later, he's doing an 80 yard burst from, from box to box. And I'm looking at it and he's bursting past players. And I'm thinking, my God, what's this guy on? Uh, you know, and the work rate in that midfield was brilliant. The, the, the defending, you know, I don't know. I know um, that as well, but I'm loving what I see when Gabriel at the end there made that defensive block. Because I think, looking back on it, I think it was, I don't know if Ray would have got that or not. I'll get, yeah. But they celebrated it like a like a win. And that's what you want to see, the passion. You know, we've got a game in three or four days' time and they're freeing you up. You, you would sort of think, oh, do you know what? I might not bother going in for that because we've got to go. No, straight in through and all that. Life. And to make it even better for, for the defensive performance, I have to say this. Um Big up Raya as well, you know what I mean? He hasn't had hardly anything to do in three or four games apart from a kicking. That's all he's had to do. But when it was put on him to make a save, he, he's made an unbelievable save. Didn't realise how good it was until I see it on TV. Uh, everybody is contributing. The substitutes that are coming on, Trossard, fantastic. Martinelli working in a defensive shape and everything like that. I can't speak highly of that performance that you go away from home and you're not hanging on, you're not worried that, that the other team's going to score, not once now, but that's twice against Manchester City and, and Brighton now. I have gone to games thinking we ain't going to concede a goal. I, I put in the prediction we weren't going to concede. Um, this defence is the real deal, boys. It really is. It's the best defence I've seen for a very, very long while. 100%. 100%. I mean, that's one of the things that I mentioned to James recently about the defence and, you know, how far we've come in the last 15 years waiting for a unit like this. You know, we've had the good defender or two over the years, Koscielny mm. here, Vermaelen there, but whether it be through a lack of a, 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 a duo or, a you know, inconsistent injuries and so on, we've never really formed a formidable defence in this Emirates era. This is the first formidable defence we have, you know, put together. Um, Jordan, Let's hear from you because I haven't heard anything from you on the mm. game yet. Um, but a 3 0 win must be happy. Turkish. Tick. tick. So, for those that are on the audio platforms listening, I just did a tick. That it's, it's another game ticked off. But actually, it's not just another game because I. I really enjoyed that game yesterday and I disagree with one point Lee made and I agree with another point he made. I disagree with the point Lee made where he said he thought we needed the third. For the first time in many, many, many years, I didn't. I thought at 2 0, they're not going to score. And I predicted 2 2, as you all know, in the um in the predictions last week. And I feel like a little bit of a mug because this is where I agree with Lee. We're a machine. We are a machine right now. And I was a person that called it about three, four weeks ago that said that forget trying to score past Arsenal. Can you create a chance past us? Can you even create a chance? We don't even give away chances. We are an absolute machine. There's lots of talk online I saw last night about um, whether this is the greatest Arsenal defence, even 11. I think 11 is a bit of a stretch at the moment, but definitely defence of all time. And I think it is comparable to George Graham. And I remember the George Graham team just about. And the, the, the George Graham back four, back five, was very, very good. They kept lots of clean sheets. But what I don't remember, and Lee can maybe correct me here, I don't remember teams having one chance a game, two max against Arsenal. I don't remember the defence being that good. At the moment, we're giving up nothing Turkish 
Absolutely nothing. Teams are like, how do we even get a shot on goal? And to, to Lee's point about the minute when they uh, Gabriel made that block and they were celebrating, I love it. And that performance last night and that win, that is the performance and the win and the defending of a championship winning team. That 3-0, because Brighton are not crap. Brighton are a half, they're a mid-table, they're a decent team. But we made them look like nothing last night. And although I just want to comment on the goals before James comes in, the first goal was really important because somebody worked out that it was it was this game last year that Saka missed the penalty mm. against West Ham. And this is where our season collapsed. We were conceding two goals against West Ham, two against Liverpool, three against Southampton. So for Saka to step up again, I think that's his fifth penalty this year. He scored all five and put it away calmly. I think there's a lot about his growth that I want to spend a bit of time talking about him later in the show. But also the, the, the third goal is the best for me because the third goal is the epitome of who we are. You're not, you can have the ball. You can have the ball. You're not going to get through us. And when we get the ball, you better be careful because we're going to score. I love that third goal. I yeah. love it. It was the epitome of a Premier League winning team in full control, in full confidence, with with, with, with confidence missed defence, but also knowing we've got guns up front and look what happened. So it was it was a really, really, really good game for me. And I think it's not the first time this season that I've seen my team and I've been confident. Even the Man City game. All right, we kind of think they might score late on because they got De Bruyne, they got Haaland. But were we really, really scared in that last 15 minutes? Was it a shock that we kept a clean sheet? I don't know if it was. So <laughs> I, I thought it was a really good performance. And my final point would be that I think I'm right in saying that we could finish the season with the best defence in the league, the best attack in the league, and still come second. <laughs> unbelievable. Mad. It's unbelievable. That shows the levels. I mean, I said to James yesterday that a lot of people are saying it's not the same Liverpool, it's not the same City. But if, if you look at the points tally and, and you add the usual six points that they have got from Arsenal, you know, by now with the two games that we've played against each, they'd be on course for a 97, 98 point season. That's up there with every other season bar one that they've both had. 90, but obviously we've managed to take four out of six from them. So people can't mm -hmm. argue that this ain't the same Man City, Liverpool. People can't argue that this should be the one where we take because, you know, it's there for the taking. No, because when we were watching them get 95 points average year in, year out, everyone was like, how do we get up there? You know, James, um, go on. Sorry, Jordan. Might sorry, James. Be... Before you come in, just one final point. Also, yesterday proved to me that Whatever happens this season, first, second or third, I know now we're taking it all the way. I don't have any doubts. We're taking this all the way. There's no falling off with three games to go. I, I, I genuinely believe we are taking this all the way to the end. If we finish first, second, third, whatever. But what I do know is we are going all the way. And I think that's something that I've not been able to say for two decades about my football team. Trust me, James. We've waxed lyrical um, not too long ago about it. Both done interviews, both mm. done the watch along. Now we're here to talk on forever. But you know, you've had a, a good night's sleep, I assume. Well, I say good night. You, you've been up at six a.m. watching F1. I don't know why the hell you're doing that, but good luck. <laughs> <to you>. um, <laughs> yeah, you feeling you feeling any better about it? Are you you moving on to the next one already? Considering the games come thick and fast. No, I, th I think you've got to appreciate these wins when they come because you've got to enjoy the title race. In fact, on the topic of enjoying the title race, the, the questions come up quite often. Are we going to win it? James, do you think we're going to win it? And we've all been asked it. We've all asked each other it. And, and I've always kind of answered it with my head, which is, you know, these fixtures and City and you never know and the running and clock leaving. And actually, firstly, the first thing I'll say is I'm, I'm not going to answer that question anymore. There's no point. We're in the final last few games. So, you know, basically anyone could win it. But my final answer is, yeah, I think we will win it. And now I'm answering with my heart more than my head. And the reason I'm doing that and the reason I am doing one last little flip-flop there, it's actually not, like I said, it's not about thinking with my head. It's just about enjoying it now. I, I, I do believe a little bit in manifesting things. I do believe a little bit in like, the players, I the players believe it, the manager believes it, and now the fans have to believe it and enjoy it every single minute of it because we got to act like we belong, and I think we do belong. I think we are good enough to win this title. Um, and whether deep, deep down in my little stupid analytical brain, I really believe we're going to, I'm just going to say we are because 
why not? We have scored the most goals. We've conceded the least. We've been easy, most impressive on the eye. We've got the best defense. Defense wins titles. All that. Yeah, you know, we've heard it. So I'm, I'm going, I'm going to enjoy it, and I'm now very much living through this, believing that at the end of it, we're going to lift that title. So, um, I just wanted to get that out there because it does get thrown around and asked a lot. And um, I was really kind of thinking about it last night watching match of the day, and then we talked about a fan cam, didn't we, Turkish? Like. How many times I watched a great, you know, Conte's great Chelsea or Mourinho's Chelsea or Pep City or Klopp's Liverpool, whoever. Even Leicester did this to a degree. You'd see them get into the run-in and you'd go, this could be, you know, Villa Park, Goodison, Selhurst. They might drop points here. Yeah, they'll probably win, but they'll be made to work hard. 3-0. And, like, that's what we did. And that's what we've been doing. We've been... People would have thought, well, at least Arsenal will be made to work hard. Or maybe the goal difference gets hit a little bit. Or maybe 3-0, easy. We gained a goal on Man City. Like It's just a top, top performance. And it was so composed and it was so calm. And I don't think anything actually showed that more, not just the result, but the fact that those first 10 minutes, I thought Brighton were good. I actually thought Brighton were good the whole game. I think we had to be really concentrated. I think we had to shut them out as well as playing our football. We weathered what was a difficult storm, which, if you pardon the pun, but actually it was quite rainy weather. You could see the, the you know the the water flying off the ball with every pass. So the ball, they had to just recalibrate their touch and their pass and get going. Then they started creating chances. And I agree with Lee. I don't think we were scintillating first half, but we still could have had three goals. Penalty is definitely a penalty, by the way. Mm. Um, people need to stop saying he touched the ball. He grazed it and then he swiped him. It, it's a pen. Um, and then the final thing I want to say is if you don't appreciate this Arsenal defence, which everyone here on this podcast does, if you don't appreciate this Arsenal defending right now, you're either a casual or a hater. And I don't throw that around that often. But when I was watching, we all were, you know, watching that game yesterday, the amount of times that the players we're constantly responding to each other's movements. Mm-hmm. We would go wide to Inciso. And maybe White has pressed on Estupinian. So Saliba will come across. I'm just making a scenario. It would be things like this. I think Jorginho would slot into centre-backs. They're always two in the box, ready to clear the ball. And then they pass the ball back and then work their way through midfield. And Jorginho will recognise that Gross, who's followed into the box, has now dropped deep to try to receive the ball. And he follows him all the way. So the whole Arsenal back four completely realign and move around. Maybe White tucks in with Saliba and then Saka will drop in to follow Stupian is looking for an overlap run. And everyone is constantly moving and press. It is not just a park the bus job. We've all played football or or been part of just a sit back. <laughs> you've never coached it, but it's two banks of four. Get your head on things. If you've got good enough defenders, you get through it. That's not what this is. This is, yes, we've got some phenomenal individuals who make it really difficult but we have a phenomenal structure as well. And it's really well coached. It's as good as the attacking coaching and it's not by accident. And I'm glad that I I saw a timeline of, uh, when I say timeline, I saw people on Twitter, not just hating on Arsenal, but actually going, oh my God, they're not, they just don't concede. They're not, when, when, when's anyone going to score against them? And it's really great to see that praise for the team because they deserve it. You have to work at that as well. And yeah, um, when I, what what's been more impressive is that I haven't seen that. You know what you're talking about there. I haven't really seen that so much in in other games, other than the, uh, the Man City. Well, if you work that out, yeah. it was international break, and then they've um, played Man City. So they must have been doing this mm-hmm. along the season. Like you know, we're going to need to do this structure at some time and how, how to do it, and they, they've put it off to a tee. You know. Just to answer Jordan's point about just Jules Graham thing, that like Jules Graham team were very, very similar. Didn't concede goals and things like that, uh, and it was an unbelievable structure to a defence. It's a different game now, obviously, mm. but individually, I, I think that these players are better than than that great back five, and I don't, I don't mean that um, lightly. I. I, I Tony Adams, you know, is probably Arsenal's best central defender. I'm going to say this now. At 21, I don't think he was better than Saliba. I think Saliba outdoes him uh, with his pace, um, with his um, uh, ball skills, you know what I mean, the way he plays out the back. 
you know, he's unbelievable. And then alongside him, you've got this beast, Gabriel. You know, the only one that I can say is close to him was probably Gabriel. Uh, Gabriel was was Keon, but yeah. I think um, I think that he would beat Keon from from that light. You know, Steve Bold was not as good a footballer as as those two guys. You know, and you know we play a lot more football. I know that the game's changed, so you can you can say that, but. You know, I, 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 and, I, and at times you have to say it's only a back three. They, they, they revert to a back three because Chinchenko goes into the um, <clears throat> into the middle where Nigel Winterburn was a left back. You know, so I think it's a, it's an amazing what I'm seeing. I, I, I've got to say that, like you know, and yeah, Brighton looked look dangerous at times. I, did, I, 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 I felt that when the second goal came and that was the game over. Then you know, because there's always that oh, oh, yeah. chance. One nil that something can happen and all yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> when teams have corners now, I'm, I, I don't know about you. I'm not fearing a corner like they had a four or five corners yesterday. Well, we'll be able to deal with him, and 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 we deal with them. Um, I just think this defense is it's definitely the best that I've seen since that um, that era. Um, I think you'd have to include David O'Leary in that as well. We went to Anfield that day and had to keep a clean sheet and and, and done it, you know, to to win a game. And uh, I do think that if we are to win the league, and you know, at this moment in time, we we are relying on us. And that's why to, today today is so important. If Man United can get something and we can, then we're back in control of it. I think then. We go on and win it because of that defence. I really do now, like you know what I mean. But we've, we've this moment in time, we're still hoping that another team does us a favour. But what, if it, that does happen, and I do think that Liverpool will be thinking that now, because do you remember last season? I I, I, I still felt we had a chance of winning the title because Man City have got to go to Everton, and and they and they went to Everton, and I thought well, they could slip up here. They smashed them three 0 and it, oh, it another great me. example of some of the fixtures I was talking about. Yeah, carry on, Lee. Yeah, and it dis disarmed us, and 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 yeah, I think that's what that result could do to Liverpool yesterday. Like, oh, they might slip up here. Like, you know what I mean? We just steamrolled it. You know, I I think without knowing it, we're putting pressure on other teams. Like, without a doubt, last season Manchester City's results put pressure on us, and we crumbled. I don't care what anybody says. I know we had injuries, but they they put the pressure on. They. They squeeze this. They put the vice in. And we've got to do that now. And by that result yesterday, I think today, because of that game yesterday, if, if Liverpool <coughs> took points today, it's because of the way we played yesterday. I think, I, I think, I, sorry, go on, Jordan. No, you, you go, you go, James. You go, you go. I was just going to say, I don't. I think they'll win, but that's all. <laughs> well, I was going to start by saying, I think it's the right point that Lee's made, wrong example. I think I think they're gonna smash United four. Um, yeah, four. They've five done this today. before. That's why they've done this toe to toe with. You know, they both done it toe to toe with each other for years. It's, it's they have. Right now, man, you know what I'm saying? They're that that bad. Then they're at home. Oh, I think they're gonna absolutely get whacked today. They're gonna get really? whacked. United are yeah. like a, yeah. a yeah. packet of. Right. What's the what's that chocolate that you get that you know you pick one night it's like shit and the other one is is, is like gold. revels. Revels. You know, I like Revels, they're, man. They're worse than Revels because I, I actually know what I'm getting with United. <laughs> I know exactly what I'm getting from yeah. United. <laughs> they're more teasers. I thought they was going to get smashed in the FA Cup game. I, I, I did. Well, it's funny, they, did, it's, they did get smashed in that game. They did, they just, yeah. They they did, yeah. Result. Somehow got... I, I, I don't know. I don't know. No, it's only... Totally, like, you're not wrong. Like, United still have... You know, Rashford on the wing, Casemiro and McTominay in midfield, who could just kind of maybe break up some play. Hoyland, who can do something. Garnacho, I think, is a good player. Like, there's quality there. Don't get me wrong. Like, no one would be surprised if Liverpool don't win at Old Trafford. I would. My logic is Liverpool have had probably about 50 shots on Man United's goal already this season across two other games. And they haven't won either of them. I don't think they're going to have another 25 shots today <laughs> and come out really. again with another drop. Well, I just think I just think they're going to... One of these yeah. three in which they look completely... Because actually, what we'll say is United... Um, I know this isn't a whole think piece on United City, uh, United Liverpool, but United in that FA Cup game actually started the better team for the first 20 minutes. And I was like, OK, look, United are on this. And then once Liverpool got on the ball, 
it should never have gone to extra time. Liverpool should they should have cruised it. Um, so, and, and that was with players still returning and whether. I think Liverpool win comfortably, but anyway, that's just... Just just, just to reinforce Turkish's earlier point about the quality of this league and how hard it is and the quality of the two teams we're up against, because fans always say, this year you've got to win it. You spent all this money, this year you've got to win it. Everybody at the start of the more. season, everybody at the start of the season would have said that City going to win the title. City are the team to be. If you finish above City, you win the league. We may well do that and not win the league. Mm-hmm. That just shows the quality of the, of the two teams we're up against. But I just wanted to mention two two players from last night's game, and and one's a negative. Sorry, I've decided I'm I'm done with Zinchenko. I'm, I am done with Zinchenko now. Um, I, I would I would definitely move him on now. Uh, I just feel like he was the, he was the one player that on more than one occasion made me nervous, and I don't think his good enough performances that we saw last year. A, I'm not seeing those anymore, but even when he does perform well, I'm just seeing too many of the other performances where I think he gives the ball away, he's, he goes to sleep at times, he can be quite easy to beat one-on-one at times. So I, I, I would, my one negative from the game would be I, I would move on Zinchenko. But my one positive, or one of my positives, is, was, 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 was Bukayo Saka. Because, James, how many goals now is Bukayo Saka on? 14. Is it 14 goals? In the league. Um, and do you know how many assists? Sorry. Um, seven, I want to say, but I might okay. be wrong on that. Okay, so we're looking at... have a look at the season. I, th- I think he's hit 30 in all comps. So if it's 30 in all comps, and this isn't even the best Saka. Mm. I don't even think Saka is... I think Foden's playing at ceiling. I think Carl Palmer's playing... They're the comparisons, right? Are playing 17 at ceiling. goals, 13 assists in all comps. There you go. 14 and 8 in the league. I, I don't think he's even playing at ceiling right now. And I just wanted to just kind of give him a quick mention because, again, it was a big penalty. He was the first goal that got us going. But this guy is a gem. He's an absolute gem. And if we can keep him fit, um, that was something else as well that I thought was perfect. We've got to take off players and think about Bayern Munich. And I'm really, really glad Arteta didn't pick a team with Bayern Munich in mind. He didn't do that. He picked yeah. his best team to beat Brighton. He didn't give a shit about Brighton, um, about Bayern Munich. And I was really happy about that. Mm. Got into a position whereby, okay, now I can now think about Bayern Munich. And he took off he took off key players, one of them being Saka. I just wanted to kind of mention Saka because I think we undervalue that Saka, what he's doing. Well, not, well, not us, but many people do um, because he's not doing what Phil Foden's doing. But he kind of is. <laughs> he kind of is. Um, and I just want I want to give Saka a bit of love because he's a phenomenal player that's not even for me anywhere near his ceiling. I think it's one for Havertz as well because he made the difference in the second half. Um, both goals, you know, finished one, um, created the other. And like I said on my fan cam, I think it was. Um, listen, he scored before, he's assisted before, but that game was a game that we needed the second goal at that time. We needed the third goal at that time. The timing of both moments was perfect and, and the execution of both moments were perfect. Sometimes at the you know start of the season, I'd look at his execution and think, he doesn't really want the ball. He doesn't look like he wants to be there. Um, obviously, this calendar year, there's been a change. I'm not saying this change just come about against Brighton, but against Brighton, you know, the two moments that won us the game, either came through him with the Trossard one or ended with him with the Jorginho underlap one. Um, either way, it's just another it's another positive for, for Havertz. People are saying they want us drug tested because Jorginho is doing byline <laughs> cut. <laughs> Jorginho flipped. I rewatched When I rewatched it, I just see him. He just sees a space and thinks, I'm in, and just goes for it. I've never seen him play with so much flair and, and movement like... Even um, at 3 0 up late in the game, he was doing some twists and turns. Little, no. I, I don't know the exact, you know, the names of this, you know, you know, when you grow up, you learn the exact name of the skill. I don't know what they're called, but he's pulling it all out. I thought, okay, Santi all is here. He's, he's he's doing his Kevin De Bruyne <laughs> underlap for the Kai Havertz assist. I'm thinking, did I just watch Jorginho charge to the byline, cut it back for Kai Havertz, both in an <clears throat> Arsenal shirt? I can't believe yeah. this. He flicked my man a call in his own in. Box. He What's flicked that? one round the corner in his own box. He was under pressure and he just flicked it round the corner. Got got and, and done a one two and just. He, he, I, I'll tell you what, he's a he's a lovely he's, player to watch. Lovely player. His to passing, watch. his passing's a cheat code for us, Jorginho. Because I will say, when we were struggling to get into that game in that first ten minutes, he drops between the defenders, picks up the ball, yeah. 
And then White just makes a he just starts to go up, hug the touch line. He cuts through the whole team. White touch in and then Saka's through. The one where Saka should have scored, cut yeah. in on his left foot and put yeah. it wide. But that Jorginho, I mean, White's pass is scintillating as well. But but that just we just went from defense to attack like that. I know Partey's got superb range in his passing, but you know, you add that to then the pass he played to Kai Havertz. Um, when Kai Havertz went in beyond. His touch was good, but took him away from goal. So he had to then lift it into the box, the back post of Jesus. You know, Jorginho's made those chances out of nothing. So he's, Do you he's know what's a great, great point from. about that, James, and uh, about Jorginho yesterday? I think party coming back into the, to, to the squad and the team, everybody here, probably we've all said, what's your best team? Party and, party and Rice, probably your midfield. It, Yesterday was a re- remind. I think it was like I will just remind you that I'm here. Oh, <laughs> it was a performance now where I'm thinking, oh, party's got to play against Bayern Munich. Uh, Bayern Munich. Oh, nah. I think Jorginho has got to play now. Like you know, after yeah. but it was just that sort of performance, and you've got to love it. You've got to love it from it there. Like you know, I will say on Saka, he never touched the ball for the first ten minutes, and I thought like this is mm. not going to be his day. Yeah, yeah. first match, he give it away. Then after that, I thought he was superb. Absolutely superb. Yeah. And I'll tell you what, Cole Palmer had a great game. And all the pundits are like, oh, Cole Palmer's, you know, better than Saka. Oh, Foden's better than Saka. Why aren't, Cole, why aren't people saying Cole Palmer is better than Foden? Or Foden's oh. better than Cole Palmer, like, you know what I mean? So why, why are they not saying that? Why is it always Saka? Why are they always comparing him to Saka? Like, you know? Because that's the benchmark. Oh, oh, no. I, I, I think that he is. I, I do think he is the bench. I do think he is the benchmark. And do you know why he played really well yesterday? I think he only had one man on him. He only had one man on him. Mm, very rarely did they. Uh, very rarely did they double up on him. That's a good like, point. When I see Cole Palmer and I, when I see Foden, they they have one opponent against them. But most of this season, if you Saka's had two on him, um. That's the, that's the levels, you know. Put two on these other kids, see what happens. But yesterday, I, I thought for 60 minutes, I thought he was right back to his best because they didn't double up on him. And if they doubled up on him, someone else would have been free in this Arsenal team. So, uh, you know... I don't know, you know, I disagree completely. I, I, I think it was another game that saw him by. Now, it's another game that, uh, you know, aside from the penalty, he had that big chance that he didn't take, but... I the thing is, he he wasn't brilliant. I'm, I'm not saying that he was brilliant. No, no, but, but, he, but he's always a threat. Yeah, I, I think exactly that. I think they're always aware that Saka's there, and if we don't, if we don't kind of marshal him, he could kill us. And I just think that, all, that aura, yeah, that aura isn't necessarily he got the ball and beat three players three times and cutbacks. No, it wasn't his best game. But I just noticed that they're scared of him. Yeah, and that's an aura that I think he's built up that. I think he should be proud of. So no, it wasn't a brilliant game from Saka. I'm not flagging him to it was one of his best games. I just think he's got to a point now where without being brilliant, he's still having an impact. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> I get he that. needed that sort of game because I think like I actually said before the game, if if he has a bad game today, I'm, this is on this is on Arteta for playing him that he's not fit, uh, sort of thing like you know. Um, but I thought he proved proved that it was. I thought it was a good a good comeback after. Bit of injury, Turkish, and I thought like it, it, it was some some positives in that performance. Yeah, yeah, no, I'm with you there. I'm with you there. I just thought like the whole threat thing and all that. I just didn't read. Really, I, I need to see a bit more from Saka in this business end in terms of being that. You know, all right, people are scared of you, but what are you gonna do now? You know, now they're scared of you. And you know, last season towards the end, the the, the question marks about Saka, you know, business end. Did he stand up tall? I don't want no questions come the end of this season. I want him to, you know, do what he's been doing for years now. Put, put, you know, not put the club on his back because you know he's had to do that previously, not so much now because of the quality. But now you've got that relief that not everything's on your back as it used to be. Use your moments, use your, you know, use this time now to to mm. come out the other end, you know, not be in the benchmark anymore because you're gone from this conversation. That's that's what it should be for for Saka now, I think, in the in the business end. But He's done enough. Um, well, I say he's done enough. He got enough minutes in his legs to to be starting against Munich. I do want to slowly but surely move it over to the Munich discussion and and maybe talk about. You know, uh, I asked a couple of times in the interviews, but was there any questions that needed answering against Brighton? Who would you start front three? I think the Jorginho Partey question's been answered. I think Lee mentioned that earlier. That probably would have been a debate. 
But I think Jorginho's performance, even for me, I'd say, yeah, Jorginho starts. Does everyone agree with that instead of Partey? I'm still wrestling with this idea that he's mm. got to come up against Musiala and who else yeah, in, yeah. in that central area. Oh, like, yeah, that's the point. I, I, I do feel like, and by the way, that might mean still playing him because Partey's not exactly looked his best, you know, in, in, in terms of fitness, box to box best. So I, I do, I, I don't know what the answer is there, but there are concerns. It's like I said on the fan cam, the perfect balance is actually, actually, no, sorry, I know the answer. I know it's to do what we did against Liverpool. You put Rice at six and you move Jorginho to the eight. So you still have that, that duo, but you just let Jorginho be the one to press a little bit higher up the pitch. Um, and Rice sit in that pocket to protect a bit better. That that's, I think, what you do in this game. Um, I do, I do think that um, I do think everywhere else on the pitch, it's very hard. I mean, Martinelli, you probably want to bring him into this team because you want him to have a go at, against a Bayern side that have been obviously losing games from two 0 up yesterday, and, and they they lose three two away from home. I can't shake this feeling that. In the Champions League, Bayern might have a comfort we don't yet, um, and that and and so for everyone's looking at Bayern's form, going we're in great form, they're in bad form, we just, we should smash them. I just don't think it's going to go like that. That doesn't mean I don't think we can play some brilliant football and score some goals. It's going to be really difficult. I think this is now the competition where if you're in that Bayern dressing room, I imagine they're going, all right, we've had one slip up in the league in ten or so years. Who cares? They'll forgive us. But let's do something in the Champions League now because we've spent 100 million on Harry Kane. We've got Sane, Gnabry, Muller, Musiala, Komen. They've got some unbelievable players, like top, top draw players, world class players who are who have won it, who are used yeah. to it. Well, not Harry Kane, um, who, who are used to it. So we need to. Um, There's no need. We need to respect that. We, what, what are you laughing at? You just that slight dig that Harry Kane, no need. <laughs> they, they it's me true, the but... <laughs> <laughs> you know. But but what he has done is proven he can score against Arsenal, unfortunately. So, uh, we need we're gonna have to respect them. And Arteta in this group will, I mean, my word, we respected Luton for a whole second half, you know, they will respect Bayern. Um, but I think the fans also, well, actually, no, the fans don't need to do shit because they're not on the pitch. The fans need to come loud, excited, and just make the Emirates nasty for them on Tuesday night. And I think we will. Yeah, can't definitely can't overlook them. But I don't want to well not I don't think disregard their their form completely because the, that should cool. give us the confidence that we need to, you know, because if we just look at their name and just look at it being the Champions League, then you know we can be put off. But if you focus on Tuchel and Arteta, their record, you know, head to head, if you focus on their league form, if you focus on, you know, their last couple of results you know that that should give us the the necessary belief, confidence, bite that we need to get the job done. Can, can I ask a question? Ask all three of you. Um, mm. and be honest. Do you fear them? Do you fear Bayern Munich? No, not I fear. Respect them. I respect them. Yeah, no. respect. Respect them. But all right, okay. Do you think? Do you think Arsenal are, will win? Yes. yes. Yeah. I do now. I think Arsenal. Will get six, seven years ago, did you think that? <laughs> Never think when we went eight one down in the tie, I felt we might not. Go <laughs> it was over then. Yeah, 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 no one we went there. You was never convinced, was you? I was not yeah. convinced that we could go there and win. Like you know, I, I we've got our. I've got my belief back in Arsenal at this moment. Like I'm going. I'm going to Brighton yesterday, thinking that we're going to win. You know, I mean, not having sleepless nights when we're going to teams like that. We went to. I went to Man City thinking that we would get something from the game. Whether you're going to or you're not is a different thing. I'm going into the Bayern Munich Tuesday and I can't wait for it. Can't wait for it. Like looking forward to the atmosphere, looking forward to the game because I feel we're in with a chance of going into the semi-finals of the Champions League. You know what I mean? Which people would have laughed at us a year ago about that, like, you know. Or it may be even in the beginning of the season with us, <laughs> yeah, you ain't going to get through the group stage. Let about it. You know? we, we have got a chance now. And I'm going to say it now. I think f form and everything does count and the way that's, that they're playing. You know, again, they lost again yesterday. I believe we're favourites for this. I believe that we're, you know, we're playing Bayern Munich and Arsenal are favourites to go through to the semi-final. 
And do you know what? I'm not going to fear that game, this game at all. Like, I'm not concentrating on we're going to get next game because it's, you know, you're right. We've got to respect them. But I, I am looking forward to it. And I'm going to say it now. If we don't beat them by two goals, I'm going to be disappointed. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, we should, we should. I mean, if we win, yeah, that, that's the main thing. But we should be, we should be pretty much not sealing the deal at the Emirates, but we should be, uh, you know, going into. Munich I'm looking at that, Turkish. I'm yeah. looking at it to seal the deal in the home game. Yeah, that would be the the idea. Would be to do that because they did that against us the last time we played played <laughs> each other. So that would be the perfect revenge, Jordan. It's funny because if it was a Premier League game between us and Bayern Munich and before the comments start chatting crap, I'm aware they that can't happen. They're a German club or an English club. But if it was in this weird world, um, a Premier clarify. League... Just to clarify, yeah. If it was a Premier League game... Glad you've done that. I, th <laughs> I think we'd beat them bad and I think we'd I'd be confident of a 3-0, 4-0 win. Honestly, the fact it's a Champions League game I, I think we win, and you guys know me. I, I, I was, I had no no issue with drawing Bayern Munich. I'm, I'm confident that we will go through, but I just think that the Champions League element, and I keep using this word, but the pedigree of being a seasoned Champions League team that's been to the latter stages, that's won it um, on, on several occasions. I just feel that that is the equalizer. I think they'll rock up saying, this is not a Bundesliga match. This is a Champions League. We can click into a different type of head, a different type of gear. And as James has mentioned, he only mentioned half of the players they've got that are world-class. They have got more world-class players than we do. And as much as I've never been completely convinced on Thomas Tuchel and he's tanking in the league, I, 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 I don't think this is going to be as easy as people think because of their form. They will turn up on, on it's a Tuesday um, for, 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 for the game looking to win. They won't care about the fact that they've lost the Bundesliga. They will turn up saying, this is the Champions League. We have experience. They do not. Let's turn up. So I think but we win. Go on, yeah. No, no, no. Sorry. I, I've been so rude. Carry on. I didn't mean No, no. I was done. I was done. No. I. So I think that everything you said is true. They will. You're right. They won't think Bundesliga. They won't think... Um, they'll think this is the Champions League. But I, I also think they'll respect us, but like in a good way. Like this is a casual talking. I don't follow the Bundesliga week in, week out. I know a lot of people will watch football from all sorts of leagues. I, I really just delve into Premier League more than anything. Um, I maybe from the outside get the impression, maybe wrongly, that part of the reason they are having a poor season or have, you know, and they nearly lost it last season, Bayern. Yeah, it's because maybe Tuchel's not doing as good a job, but maybe there's a complacency there. Maybe there's a... We're going to play a certain way because we expect to beat these teams and we have the best players or whatever. And I do fear that Tuchel will be aware of his record against Arteta and the the good, the really good matchups and games they've had against each other. And Bayern Munich are a proper club, again, talking as a casual. And I hear the way, you know, Thomas Muller's been talking going into this game. I think there will be a, a recognition from them that, that they, you know, Arsenal are good and we're going to have to do something to slow them down. I think they might revert to a back three. Tuchel's done it before, you know, in his time as a, as a manager. I think they might go to a back three. Um, I think they might get the likes of Sane, Gnabry, whoever's fit around Harry Kane, Musiala, near to Harry Kane. And I, th I think they might make it difficult for us because they'll respect us. And I just don't know if they go into every other game necessarily respecting who they're coming up against in terms of how good they are. And maybe that's where the complacency comes in and maybe that's where the, the lapses come. I know it sounds like I'm probably making a load of excuses early on. I'm just I'm just trying to prepare ourselves for a buy inside. Are they, I think we'll be more are they playing for two cool though? Like, I, I don't I'm not I can't I don't I can't say I watch Bundesliga week mm. in week out. It's a highlight if that, you know. Mm. But there to be 13, 16 points behind by a Leverkusen, to to see and hear some of the results that have come out of there. Even the first leg against Lazio, they lost, albeit they turned it around. Is it a case of they're done with Tuchel and they, they know now it's the next manager and, and the reality is they're just playing for their own self-pride more than anything so that the, the tactics and all that are all, you know, in one ear, out the other ear? I just, that's the it, feeling it, I get. It could be. I've always thought Tuchel, when people had Tuchel as an elite manager, I always thought he was that level below elite. I, I mean, I thought Pep and Klopp, were in a league of their own. And then I'd arguably have like Simeone, 
mm-hmm. Conte before we went to Tottenham, mm-hmm. yeah, and then Tuchel, like. Yeah. And that's before we get into the Arteta discussion. But of course, we know the guy needs to lift things before anyone will even take us seriously. So I'm, I, I, I agree. Maybe there's something in that. I don't think. I mean, you, you know, he went and signed Eric Dyer, didn't he? I'm not sure. You know, but I, I, I don't, I, I don't, I don't know. I, I, I don't know if they're playing for him. I don't know. I think, anyway. ta- I think tactically as well. I trust that Arteta will have a plan for Kane. Like when there's no shots with Kane, right? We know Kane. His record against Arsenal is really impressive, but I really, really hope that he has a plan for Harry Kane. And also, we kind of know the how Bayern are going to play, right? They're, they're, they're going to dominate the ball. They're going to want to dominate the ball a little bit like what Brighton did, but obviously with better players. So we have to prepare for the fact that Bayern Munich will look to have the ball. How do we a keep them I don't out? Know they will. But also. You don't think they will? So that's what I, that's kind of what I was alluding to, but it takes me two hundred words to just say that simple sentence. I don't. Th- I think they'll concede possession a little bit, and okay. I think they'll obviously have spells. Um, but I do. I, this is what I mean. I think they're going to respect us, and I think Tuchel might do something different. Well, I hope so because I think when we have the ball at home, I think we're, we're you know we're a big problem. I love it, but I, I I think they're going to try and dominate the ball. In which case, we have to impose ourselves on them. As much as I think we should respect Bayern Munich, it's Bayern Munich. We're Arsenal, and we're in hot red hot form right now. So I'm looking. You know, I hope Lee's right. I hope that we can finish this first leg with a two, even three goal lead. Come come the end of ninety minutes. Yeah. Well. Uh, on that, I think it's only right to move on to predictions next. Mm. Before we interesting got to see what we're saying, yeah. Do that. Mm. Let me bring up the table. Um, I was gonna say no change because there wasn't no change considering everyone got a point for a correct result, not a correct score against Brighton. But then Jordan decided to be late for today's show, so there is a bit I of a change. Jordan say two two. Yeah. Oh shit! You did say two two, so you're on two points down, mate. Yeah, yeah you should yeah, be on twenty. Yeah, yeah. You should be on twenty five. Yeah, sorry, people, that should be twenty five. Oh, we say sorry to them for it's yeah, to me. Yeah, yeah. it's it's, it's yeah. Yeah, yeah. Cheers, James. On me, the wrong table. Sorry, on there. thank you, James. Thank you, James. Yeah, sorry about it's that. become it's become the Premiership. It's a free horse race. It has. <laughs> well, has it? Has it really? Just about. Uh, behind. Is it really? It's called to get a free horse race. This guy's yeah. a disgrace. I think it's a one horse race at the moment. Yeah, just about, just about. All right, cool. We kick off with James, of course. James, where are you going with? Um, I think we'll win. I don't think it will be a job done first leg. I think we will go through, but I'm going to go 2-1 Arsenal. 2-1, and there's the updated table. 2-1 Arsenal. I'm going 3-1 Arsenal. Lee? Where did you go, James? I went 2-1. I'm going to go 2-0. 2 0 and Jordan. I was gonna go 2 1. Um, it will be 2 1 or 2 0. Uh, I'm gonna go 2 1 as well. I'm gonna 2 1 Arsenal. So, a couple two ones from James and Jordan, 2 0 from Lee, 3 1 from me. Um, couple two goal margins and couple tight wins. I, I'm gonna say it now, predict me, call me bold or whatever. I think this could be more. I hope oh, it could. It could. I honestly can see Arsenal winning this three or four. Do you know I'm what happy. I need, Lee? Do you remember when Liverpool and Klopp announced themselves 3 0 up at half time against City in the Champions League quarter final? And everyone was like, wow. Salah's first season, I think. And you're like, yeah, okay. Mm-hmm. Like, it's clicking for them. I want that night for us. I want that night where we do something. Uh, yeah. Like, we beat Liverpool 3 1 a few months ago. But, and, but I'm just saying. We've had wins. I'm just saying, you know, that moment where everyone goes. I, 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 I think, yeah. I think I love just that. Got this feeling there's going to be a moment in this game where we're going to be too much for them and whether we take advantage of that. Yeah. Or not can, I, can, I, can I change mine? I'll allow it. Go on. Yeah, I'll allow it. I'll allow it. Go on. 4 1. 1 0 by it. <laughs> <laughs> Four one, four one. I like four, that. I four, like that. Four one. Four, four one. one. Cool. I, 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 I don't know what it is. Call me mad. I say. I, I, I've just got the. I, I might be proved wrong here. I've just got a feeling that we're, it's going to be a great night on Tuesday night. Let, let, let's not forget the last no time game. we won champion, the no last time we was in the Champions League. We got absolutely stroked ten two by Bayern Munich. So I don't know how much of an element revenge is, but. 
<laughs> we need to read to let this team know that we're still hurting. These players but, won't care. Ben White no, no. won't even know we lost 10 to on aggregate. <laughs> <laughs> you, it, they'll be showing right. Arteta You're will right. be in that change room being like, I played in this game. They fucking destroyed us. And Ben will be like, he used to play for Arsenal. Like, <laughs> you know, you know, I, mean, no, I know what you're saying. They won't care. But I, th I think that the players like Saliba, Gabriel, even Shinchenko, um, not so much the English guys, but those foreign players in this team know what 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 Europe's about and they want to make a big impression on, on Europe. You know, I look at Saliba, for instance. I think he's not getting the credit he deserves over in France at this moment in time because it's the Premier League. If he does smash it against uh, Bayern Munich, he'll get, oh, look at how good he is. Uh, so I think that these guys will want to... I've got something to prove, prove to the European people, like, you know, I mean, what a good side and what good players are. And that is why I think Arsenal will 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 come out. I think you're right. I think James is also right. I, I, I think the, the players won't care about the 10 to eight, what, eight or eight years ago, whenever it was. But I think from the fan base, I just think we remember. And I just, I would love the team to feel the pain. I don't know about you, Turkish, but I'm still hurting. That 10 2 still hurts me. It really, yeah. really hurts me. It, 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 it's, it's a scar. There's a couple of games in our history that haven't haven't left me, and that's one of them. So I think I'm, I'm going to be there as well uh, for this game. And nice. I really, oh, really... Nice. Shut, shut, shut up. Yeah. And I really... We've we got to do our bit as well. We've got to make the Emirates an absolute... We, we've got to make it a madness. We, yeah. Yeah. Be having, it will so, be. It will be. We'll be having sex in the press box. Highlights. <laughs> 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 Back in a minute, guys. Back in a minute. Back in a minute. Back in a minute. Back in a minute. <laughs> Just because he can. Just because he can, mate. Just because he can. <laughs> you're, not, you're not the boss of me. Tierra Henry next to him on CBS. Fucking <laughs> okay, no, hell, what's going on in there? <laughs> va va voom. Um, yeah, on that note. <laughs> on that note. We, 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 we. Yeah, we we. Um, Ah, listen, people, we're going to round off with comments of the day. Slightly shorter show than usual because we had to fit it in Sunday morning. And obviously, people have got Sundays to get on with. Like James said, him, him and Lee are playing football later today. Not together separately, but good luck to them both. So comments of the daytime. Everyone ready to go? Yeah, ready to go. Yeah, um, can I go first on this one? Because... Yeah, you go first. <laughs> <laughs> we watched it back and... and, and... Everybody's got a point, you know. What I mean? But I didn't really see it, like you know. What I mean, I can safely say that I wasn't asleep. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> but it did look like, you know, I look, I look like, you know, death warmed up. Should I say that? Like, you know I mean? <laughs> but I, yeah, so anyway, he's like definitely not, not a morning person. If he weren't blinking, you think he was frozen? Like I, mean, <laughs> I actually looked back and I and I said, and then there was a couple of comments like shout out to Lee for reversing his energies for the next pod. I've got that one. I've got that one. <laughs> He's asleep. <laughs> and it's all right. and I can assure you that I want, but I wasn't. But looking at it, that's why I've come back lively. That I've had chocolate bananas, mate. <laughs> <laughs> it's only nine a.m. <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, so, uh, mine. So, yeah. Mine's right. on subject, so I might as well go next. But I had to get one in on the subject because there was a fair few quality ones. This one's from Aaron, and he said, if only Harry Potter knew that the key to defeating Voldemort was an early morning. He said, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't like the Voldemort ones. I don't like them. Like, you know I mean? <laughs> Not unnecessary. <laughs> So uh, I figured those two would be picked up. I figured. So, so they were two of my three. The third is from Dr. Gordon. And I think it's nice because this person doesn't always get the appreciation he deserves how brilliant he is. But he says, love this pod, guys. Straight vibes. And Jordan grew on me. Absolutely love him now. I just want to say I'm sorry he did that. Um, <laughs> yeah. It won't last very long. Just, I'll, 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 I'll annoy you at some point. I'll just quickly come in. Sorry. I was at the game yesterday, right? And... Uh, I, 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 about four four blokes. I'm not going to name them like now. They've gone. Oi, Lee, no Lee, Lee. And I've looked round. They've gone. When you're on the forever Arsenal, say Jordan's a wanker. <laughs> 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 I 
I went, I will do. Yes, I, I will, will do, me. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, heard that Gra- I heard that was Graham and his mates. <laughs> 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 you asked me to do the same thing. I didn't know what they was going to say, but... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I love all that stuff because that means they love George. I bet you do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's football bands, man. I love them too. I love them too. Come on. Right, um, uh, my on. one is um, from Wormlet. Simple. I shudder every time Jordan says dirty sheets. I just get an image of someone shitting the bed. <laughs> <laughs> I saw that one as well. <laughs> I love my clean sheets. And um, <clears throat> before we end the podcast, because I know the comments will be filled with it, and to be fair, rightly so, um, yes, Kai Havertz was absolutely brilliant, and yes, on a longer show, he'd have had a 15-minute segment for sure, um, but we've been giving him a lot of praise recently. They're going to blame um, me. They're going to blame me. They're going to say, no, I didn't want to talk about it. It's I'll just your fault, fault, to be fair. But he I was... He was say, I, I didn't think he was as good as what everybody was making out on the... On, on, when I, but looking back on it, you're very influential. Terrific. And, um, long gone, know, long gone, other days, people are saying he creates space. Long yeah, gone, yeah no days. one's mentioning yeah. that. It's no true. one's mentioning no, that anymore. Man, he oh. watches the show. That's all I'm saying. Like, <laughs> I mean, he's not happening in his circus. You know what I mean? He's having his holiday in Cyprus this year. I understand that. <laughs> 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 no, but he was top, top. Like really good, but I didn't oh, think he was good oh. against Luton. Got the assist, but I didn't think he was good against Luton at all. But then byline, cut cross into the box, good finish, winning headers, hold up play, yeah. everything was good. Runs in beyond, set up for Jesus as well. Honestly, yeah. like proper centre really forward, proper centre forward yesterday. Yeah, it was. Good on him. and his thing made the difference. And assist for Trossard, brilliant assist match. as well. It looks easy, but. Yeah, well done. Well, to be honest, if Jesus finished ahead of that, would have been a brilliant assist as well. But like you said, we you know we're constrained by time today. You two got football, so we are going to wrap it up here. People coming up to one hour, so hopefully you've hit the like button. I wanted a thousand. James wanted two thousand. Make it happen. Subscribe to the channel. Make sure the notification bell is on, and make sure you support the individual channels going around as well. People, we'll be back after the Munich game. Before the Aston Villa game, it might be Wednesday, it might be Thursday. So just just make sure your notification bell is on and you'll know exactly when it is. Love for the love, people. Hit the like button on the way out. Peace. We're out.